Hi, MLA Pete Guthrie here. There's been a lot of dissatisfaction and trust lost over the canceling of the in-person SGM in favor of mail-in balloting. I've been asked to explain the prospect of membership list corruption and accusations around the 2017 leadership race. So I'll start with that. Apparently, there is an ongoing investigation around the circumstances of that leadership contest, but I cannot confirm or deny that as fact. What I can do is describe what allegedly took place. The 2017 leadership vote was open to all 100,000 plus members and was conducted online. Each member of the party was provided with a PIN via email and using verified ID, such as a driver's license, they cast a vote for the candidate of their choice. Now, allegations swirled about the membership list being compromised with claims that people were unaware that they held a membership, let alone cast a vote in the leadership election. Apparently, personal identification was acquired by a companies that maintain driver's licenses in their database. So for instance, car rental agencies, or trucking firms or taxi companies. With the ID in hand, unknown individuals fraudulently purchased memberships using fake email addresses. Once the voting process began, access pins were sent to the phony email addresses and the offenders simply uploaded the matching driver's license and voted for the candidate of choice with the actual registered member being none the wiser. It is rumored that this technique was employed thousands of times over. So naturally, if this is accurate, this would have significantly impacted results. And these allegations may well have played a factor in why online voting was passed over in favor of mail-in for this upcoming leadership review. Now, the canceled in-person SGM had 15,000 signups. Each of these individuals paid $10 for a membership $99 for the SGM fee and were willing to drive to Red Deer prepared to cast a vote on April 9th. A vote where one must show proof of identity using photo ID. With mail-in, ballots are sent to a fixed address and they are returned filled out based on the honor system. Since no identification is required to take a membership or to obtain a ballot, this means that members are not validated at any point. And if an ID submission was to accompany the ballot, it still not, may not be trustworthy. Furthermore, a massive number of new memberships were uploaded to the system on the final weekend to purchase, in the order of 10 to 20,000 in just the last few days. Hence, a problem exists. How can one verify these members as authentic? Now, the party has stated they will obtain an auditor to oversee the event, but this is not an accurate depiction of the role. This is not an audit. They are hired merely to oversee the count and ensure ballots are not tampered with. A true audit would require an entire system analysis whereby each member is verified, as you would do in a general election. So, why is validation important? Well, there is a well-known political tool used whereby block purchases of memberships are made. Community group or association lists can be utilized without consent of the individual by third parties to purchase large swaths of memberships. Now, in Alberta, it is not legal to purchase memberships for another person, let alone without consent. Well, hang on, check that. Bill 81, which passed in Alberta's legislature last fall, allows for an individual to mass purchase up to $4,000 worth of memberships without consent. But this legislation did not come into force until April 1st of this year. So if indeed this practice was utilized, it would be an offense. I would like to add several MLAs fought hard to stop these changes in Bill 81, but we were unsuccessful. Nevertheless, this is why membership validation is so important in having a process that members can trust, to have one of integrity. Mail-in ballots themselves may not be flawed, but it requires checks and balances 
and the result is only as good as the source of data. A third-party audit of the UCP membership list would provide transparency, but if this is not satisfied, then an in-person vote is the best course of action. That said, the delays support the incumbent. They push matters down the road, making a change in leader more difficult the closer that one gets to a general election, so that being May of 2023. In my view, one option remains. To maintain trust, forego the review, and move directly into a leadership contest. I believe there'll be a lot of high-quality candidates come forward. There have been many great leaders in Alberta's history, and there are many more on the horizon. Thank you.